Fala aí rapaziada, como é que vocês estão? Eu espero de coração que todos vocês estejam bem E meus amigos, estamos começando mais um vídeo no canal Já vai deixando aquele like que sempre ajuda muito na divulgação do vídeo E se inscrevam no canal ativando o sininho E vamos começar o vídeo de hoje falando sobre o atleta Classic Physique Pro Classificado para o Mr. Olympia, o Eric Wildberger Que ontem mostrou seu shape atual no rebote após 20 dias de férias lá na Europa O Eric comentou que nesse período ele comeu muita pizza muito macarrão e muito sorvete, mas que agora já está 100% focado para o próximo desafio da sua carreira e o maior desafio da sua carreira, que é o Mr. Olympia de 2023. Ele comentou que chegou de viagem ontem e já começou a preparação. Atualmente, ele está com 122 quilos e tem 19 semanas para buscar a sua melhor versão da vida. O Eric, que vem tendo uma grande evolução desde que ele migrou da Men's Physique para Classic Physique. E os físicos que ele apresentou em suas duas competições desse ano, que foi o Pittsburgh Pro e o ótimo Classic, né? mostraram que ele tem condições de buscar quem sabe até mesmo um nível aí top 10 no Olímpia. Vamos ficar de olho no decorrer dessa preparação do Eric e já comentem aí suas expectativas para a fera no Olímpia e o que vocês acham do shape dele. Ainda sobre atletas da Class Physique, agora nós vamos falar sobre Ramon Dino, que ontem fez uma presença VIP lá em Belém e foi recebido como uma verdadeira estrela. Parece que mais de duas mil pessoas estavam lá para ver o Ramon neste evento, que aconteceu de noite, e desde de manhã já tinham filas se formando esperando ele, mostrando quanto o cara arrasta multidões de fãs por onde passa. O Ramon postou algumas imagens da sua chegada no evento e olhem como ele foi recebido pelos fãs de Belém neste vídeo em som ambiente do local. Amigos, e vamos finalizando os temas do vídeo de hoje falando sobre Rafael Brandão. Quem nos segue no Instagram viu que rolou uma certa polêmica sobre a estratégia do Rafael Brandão de fazer duas refeições durante a madrugada, acordando 3 horas da manhã e 6 horas da manhã para isso. Algumas pessoas ficaram impressionadas e questionaram se não seria melhor dormir de uma forma seguida. Então, o Brandão pediu para o seu coach Neil Hill explicar ao público o porquê dessa estratégia em recente vídeo para o seu canal. Confiram aí o que o Neil disse sobre isso. Esse vídeo, eu acho que o que nós estamos fazendo na noite, na noite, você sabe? E agora eles estão falando sobre... It's not good for Raphael wake up at the night and eat or no it's really good because he's working you mm -hmm. know yes yes when you put something yes it's different yes yes some people will like it some people don't uh -huh. but I think most of these people 99.9 percent never did it yes, so yes. they just talk yes you yes. know what I mean uh -huh. so let's explain how this works because okay. not a I'm not a wake up and prep a meal, yes, you yes. know what I mean? Yeah. And eat a yes. fucking big meal, you no? Know? Yeah, yeah. It's so. more like a snack. So I will say that there's a lot of truth that eating in the night is not conducive and is not positive. And the reason I say that is because if we're consistently eating, that's a lot of stress on our digestive system and our, system, our digestive system needs to sort of desensitize a little bit or de-stress itself and obviously sleeping times are very important for that. Some people would argue the fact that waking up in the night and eating is going to disturb with sleep and you are correct but bodybuilders are going to wake up at least one to three times in the night to pee yes? yes. So you're automatically disturbing your sleep yeah. and if you're not waking up to pee you're not drinking enough water yeah. and it's essential that water is very high Uh, through the process of bodybuilding for health and well-being reasons, okay? So you're already breaking into your sleep. We've put a huge amount of emphasis now into your digestive health 
which wasn't in place before. Yeah. So it, when there was a lot of inflammatory responses in your active, live, positive uh, microbiome and live um, digestive um, uh, bacteria was in a negative state, putting food into your digestive system or digestive tract at night would have been negative right. because it was already compromised before. Now we've got your your digestive uh, tract healthy and, and in a positive state now. The fact that we're putting more like a snack into you as opposed to a big high uh, digestible food source is only aiding your process of keeping in you in a higher sense of recovery and anabolism and supporting protein synthesis through the night. When we consume foods, obviously throughout the day, um, we really want to make sure that our sugar balance is a level, our nitrogen retention, which is our protein, is all pretty stable. At the night time, it doesn't just drop suddenly because our body indirectly deregulates itself to make sure it just doesn't shut down. Unless somebody went to bed and they were already in a negative state of nutrient absorption. So what we're doing is we're just, we're, we're, we're in this position in the day where we're eating six meals, it goes down slowly, you wake up, you, have your, you, you obviously have that snack, and it allows you to stay stable and then slowly elevate again when we have meal one. If your digestive system was not in a positive state, then we wouldn't be putting that food in. But we've had no digestive issues whatsoever. You're waking up in the morning feeling, hey, I feel full in my yeah, muscle yeah, bellies. Yeah. Our weight is holding stable. We're not gaining bad weight. Yes, we are gonna cycle carbs. We spoke about that yesterday. Yeah. So we will be mm -hmm. cycling carbs at different phases. Not necessarily just for the manipulation of keeping body fat in a positive place, but also to upregulate um, insulin sensitivity so that we don't become kind of insulin compromised. Um, so we will be carb cycling at different phases. I do want to do some videos on, on this on, on a separate, you know, separate day, the benefits of carb cycling, right. you know, in the off season, which also relate to pre-contest time as well. Right. But um, I feel that a lot of people will some, you know, sometimes form opinions and they don't actually know all of the variables and they don't understand everything. If as I said, your digestive health was not in a good place. Um, putting food into you in the evening time would not be conducive. But your digestive system is utilizing these food types incredibly well, processing foods. Your bowel movement is perfect. You know, you're, you're not walking around burping with acid reflux. You're in a very positive place at the moment as far as digestive health. But we will obviously be um, introducing cycling at different times. Yeah. So now